Are you looking for more ways to use these? I've got 10 incredible ways for you to use your embossing folders. Let's get crafting. For the washi tape technique, you need washi tape. We all pretty much have this very inexpensive craft supply hanging out somewhere in the craft room. I have a set of Tim Holtz washi tape, so you know that they all go together. I also have some coppery color metallic ones that I'm gonna add in. And I'm gonna speed this up, but you want to make sure that your washi tape extends over the edge of your cardstock because you're gonna be folding it in. Also, make sure that if you want a border around your cardstock, that you go ahead and cut your cardstock down before you apply your washi tape. Now, even though I'm using washi tape on a diagonal, doesn't mean you have to. You could certainly kind of collage this if you wanted and just add washi tape wherever you want, overlapping as needed. You could make vertical stripes or horizontal stripes. Really, anything goes here because we're going to emboss over this. The embossing folder I've chosen is Sizzix 3D and it is called Bohemian Botanicals. Now I do use a Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine and I noticed that uh, the back of my washi tape was starting to lift so I'm just using some regular cellophane tape, misting the back and then placing it in my embossing folder. Now I find that most of my Sizzix 3D embossing folders just need the platform base, my cardstock inside my embossing folder, and then a cutting plate. But sometimes that varies. And you'll notice that, I, I notice that uh, I don't have as deep an emboss as I would like, so I'm going to run it through again. And this time I'm gonna add a piece of chipboard to see if it will create more pressure you see that, how it locked up? If it gets to that point with your machine, stop. You will break your machine if you put it through when it does that. So I went back to the original sandwich and just ran it through a few more times and got the result that I was looking for. The second technique is napkin embossing, and I'm just using this uh, foliage napkin that I got at Hobby Lobby ages ago, and um, I'm going to open it completely and just cut one quarter of the napkin out since that's all I need for my piece of cardstock. Next, you want to separate any tissue layers from the face of the tissue, so the printed part. And in this case, these are only single ply, but some napkins actually have up to three additional layers of tissue. Now, I'm just using a glue stick. This one's just a Elmer's Craft Bond glue stick but you could use double-sided tape if that's your adhesive of choice. I would not suggest using any type of liquid glue here. You want something that's going to dry pretty instantaneously. Once you have glue on your cardstock, go ahead and lay your piece of napkin down to the face of your cardstock and using a brayer or your hand, gently rub out any air bubbles. Since this is um, so thin a material, I'm going to go ahead and fold my cardstock over. I personally like to angle cut at the corners. This will give you a much easier way to adhere your sides completely down to the back of your cardstock. If you were to just lay it over, you're going to end up with some of the tissue that needs to be cut, and that becomes bulky or awkward. 
that same glue stick, I'm just going to apply glue to the back side of my cardstock so I can fold the tissue over. Now, this very first one, I actually added too much glue, but I left it in there because it does dry rather quickly. Now, I'm just going to do right where, about the width of what you're uh, going to fold over. I hope that makes sense. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Doing that diagonal cut was actually something I learned when I worked in a high school library. Um, during one of my classes <laughs> about a million years ago, I had to cover every paperback book with contact paper, and this is how we did it. So that technique has certainly come in handy many, many years later. You don't really need to wait very long for this to dry enough for you to emboss. I can go ahead and emboss right now. I'm going to be using Sizzix 3D Embossing Folder. This one is called Crack. If you recall what I said earlier in the video about not every embossing folder will work the same in your machine, this is a prime example. I had to use a different sandwich because it was too thick. Recently, I was checking my analytics for YouTube and I discovered an alarming statistic. 86% of the folks who tuned in to any of my videos last month were not subscribed to my channel. Well, why should you subscribe? There are a couple of benefits, and the first one is that it's free. Free is good. Free is very good. Secondly, it shows your support for the content creators that you enjoy the most. And third, you're going to receive a notification letting you know when your favorite content creators have released new content. It's not an email. It's not a text message. It's nothing obtrusive like that. When you go into YouTube and you look at your subscription button at the bottom, there's going to be a little red dot there. If it's there, it means that somebody has released a video for you. When you click on that button, you're going to see all of the content creators that you've subscribed to their channels, without having to scroll through masses of videos on your home screen in the hopes that you find something you like. But there'll be a blue dot by that content creator allowing you to know that they've released new content. That's it. And if you really want to, you can hit the bell. The bell will give you an audible notification when we release a new video. That's all there is to it. I am trying to reach a goal of 10 thousand subscribers and I need your help to do it. So if you find value or enjoyment from my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. Number three is so much fun, using your embossing folder as a stamp press. How cool is that? So I'm going to use Lisa Horton's Budding Bloom 3D embossing folder, some distress oxides in saltwater taffy, hickory smoke, and scorched timber, along with some small stamps from various stamp sets. Now you need to choose a 3D embossing folder that has a lot of flat or negative space. Find that space where your uh, image is indented into the folder so you've got a lot of flat space there. I'm going to use hickory smoke and I'm going to load up a sponge dauber with my hickory smoke. Now I already pretty much know where I'm going to um, place my card in my folder so I'm just going to color over those flat areas in the card. Now don't worry if it's not dark enough I'm going to I'm going to show you how to fix that, but we're just going to color over the negative areas on your embossing folder. Once you have enough ink on your folder, go ahead and add your cardstock and run it through your machine. Okay, let's check out our result. And you see how the gray has moved into that negative space, but I have some spots that didn't get any ink. So I'm going to leave my paper in the folder right where it is, and I'm just going to figure out where I need to add more ink and then run it through the machine again.
After a second round of ink and embossing, I think we finally have enough ink on our background. Now here's the fun part. Now I'm gonna use a small butterfly stamp from a May May Made It uh, stamp set, and I'm inking that up with saltwater taffy distress oxide. And I'm just going to stamp it randomly throughout the negative spaces that we just inked up with the hickory smoke. I've run it through my embossing machine and it has transferred the ink onto the background of my embossed image. Now I'm going to use an old Helen Hudson, um, like multiple dots, along with scorched timber. And now this color is really overpowering, so I'm going to be very gentle. You could even stamp it off if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to add some of these little dots randomly throughout and do the exact same thing. Now check it out, those little dots have also transferred. I am going to make these all into cards, so please hang on until the end where you'll see the finished products. Number four is dual embossing folders. And for this one, we need a standard 2D embossing folder like this Park Lane Stripes folder, as well as a 3D embossing folder. Now, if you don't have a standard folder, you can certainly use a stencil and emboss the stencil first. Now I've run this one through my machine and here's our result. I can get it open and that's kind of cool. And now we're gonna add those pine branch right over top of it. So I am gonna miss the back just a little bit because this is a 3D embossing folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that through my machine. Now your 3D folder should have quite a bit of negative space so that your standard 2D folder still remains prominent to your background. Don't forget to hang out until the end. I have made a few of these embossed panels into cards and I can't wait to show them to you. Number five, Distress Spray Embossing. So I'm gonna be using this Spellbinders embossing folder called Beautiful Blooms, some Distress Oxide sprays and mica sprays, and one ink pad. I'm gonna be using Distress Oxide in Hickory Smoke. Now, I'm looking for the side of the folder that has the most negative space, the flat side, along with the indentions. You don't want the part that is out because you want to color the flat parts. So I'm just figuring out where in the embossing folder I'm going to use because obviously this is a big embossing folder. So I'm just going to rub my Distress Oxide pad over the negative space, making sure that I cover all of the place that's going to end up on my cardstock. And then I'm gonna run it through the embossing folder. Camera, I did spritz my watercolor cardstock with some water. And now before I totally drop it on there, I wanna make sure I like the lineup, and I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it down and emboss. Once embossed, make sure that you don't move your cardstock from its spot. So I've just used some low-tack mint tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the hickory smoke ink from my embossing folder. And now I'm gonna concentrate on the flowers, the indented part of this embossing folder. I'm gonna start with some saltwater taffy distress oxide spray, and I'm just aiming for the center of the blooms. Next up is Distress Oxide Spray in Crushed Olive, and this time I'm going to aim for the foliage of my flowers. Using a piece of paper towel, I'm going to wipe up the negative space, leaving the ink inside the indentions. Now I wanted to give my flowers a little bit of pizzazz, so I'm gonna add some mica spray, and this time I'm gonna use mulled cider. 
um, mica spray, which is part of a holiday collection somewhere along the line. And you do want to make sure that you shake up your mica so that it's no longer settled on the bottom. And you can either do side to side, which I'm doing here, kind of like a bell, or up and down. But if you do the up and down motion, you may get some ink out of the nozzle. So just be aware of that. And I'm just adding a couple of spritzes here and there on the blooms to kind of give them some dimensional color. And then once again, tidy up with a paper towel. I'm just kind of going back and forth between the saltwater taffy and the mold cider. Remove my tape and emboss, and then I'll be right back. After embossing, let's take it up and see what we look like. And it's beautiful. All of that spray has lent itself very nicely to a kind of watercolor look. Beautiful. Six is emboss, cut, and shuffle. And we're going to take this 3D organic petals embossing folder and emboss three different colors of cardstock all in the same place inside the folder. That's super important for this technique. Then we're going to take our paper trimmer and we're going to cut this down in exactly the same place on all three panels. In this case I'm using one and three quarters inch stripes. The last one will be a little larger. It doesn't really matter. The key here is to cut all three pages in exactly the same place and to orientate all three pieces of cardstock in the same way. Um, and then we're going to make three card bases out of this. I'm using three pieces of Recollections 65 pound card for my card panels and I'm going to separate all three of my pieces of cardstock onto the three pages. Now this is going to be kind of like a puzzle because all three pieces need to line up precisely with its other images. So I quit paying attention to where I was and you're going to see that I need to kind of maneuver things around to figure out how the pattern is going to meet up with one another. But then I'm just going to simply glue them down. So I'm going to speed this up and get to the end here. With my three panels figured out, I'm going to use Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue, which is my, my favorite glue of choice. And I'm going to simply add enough glue that if I have to wiggle things, I still have a little wiggle room. And uh, voila, we're going to have three completely different panels for cards. Number seven is embossed patchwork. Now this is a fantastic way to use up leftover pattern paper and pattern strips as well as just regular random strips that you have left over. I'm going to be using the Sizzix 3D embossing folder called Acorn. So I want this one to be fall related and I am picking out anything that is yellows, oranges, greens, browns, reds. And uh, I'm going to do that and I'll catch right back up with you. Now that I have my pattern paper strips ready to go, I am going to tidy up my area and take the larger pieces and cut those down into strips. I pretty much want everything to be around mm, no more than three quarters of an inch because I'm only doing a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card and anything larger than that really starts to take over. 
um, I'm going to use some scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive and my Tim Holtz 9.5 inch titanium shears. These are fantastic because they don't hang on to the glue. To adhere the double-sided adhesive straight, I just pull back a corner and I line the corner up with the cardstock and then I go ahead and pull the release tape off and I get a nice smooth um, release. And I do keep that release paper. I keep it in a little pouch and I use it for um, if I want to make uh, embellishments out of like uh, co pops of color. And they're great for using that. Or if you've got something where you have to press glitter into a double-sided tape, then you can keep the glitter off your hands by putting that release paper back on top and just rubbing it. Now I am going ahead and cutting down my large pieces. This is a great idea to use backgrounds that you really didn't like either. This here is an optional step. I am going to use Scorch Timber Distress Oxide and a sponge dauber, and I am going to ink up the edges of every strip. It might be a little overkill. That's entirely up to you. I knew the vision that I wanted for mine. So now I'm going to release the top of the uh, double-sided double adhesive sheet and we're going to make a patchwork quilt. Now this is a great way to use up those strips. I'm just going to speed this process up and let you see what I'm doing and I'll meet you when we're done here. Don't forget to tell me which embossing folder method you liked the best in the comments below. Once you have your strips on, flip it over and cut off any remaining strips. And it's beautiful just on its own, but we're going to jazz it up just a little bit. I'm going to use this 3D Acorns embossing folder. Now this might be hard to see on camera. You can sort of see the leaves there. I'm going to go ahead and ink up the leaves so you can see them a little bit better. But it has a lot of texture. Number eight is embossed acetate. So I'm just using a piece of acetate. You can also use a piece of laminated film and this organic petals 3D embossing folder. This one I really like for this technique. So I'm using it again. And here we are, I've embossed it. And I'm gonna show it to you against the black, uh, the black cardstock there so you can really see it. It's really beautiful and easy. Number nine is diffused embossing. So we're gonna make our own diffuser with some circle dies and a piece of cardboard from the packaging of um, some cardstock. And I'm just gonna choose any circle die and cut it from the center of my cardboard. Now keep both pieces because you can use both pieces for different looks for different diffusers. Now you can certainly buy a diffuser. Um, if I can find any, I will link them below but it's just as easy to make your own from some type of heavy cardstock. I'm gonna be using a Spellbinders Falling Leaves embossing folder. Now this is super easy. You're just going to place your cardstock in your embossing folder just like you normally would. But this time you're gonna place your diffuser on top of your embossing folder and run it through your die cutting machine. I will hold mine down with some um, mint tape just to keep the diffuser in place as it pushes through my embossing folder, embossing machine. And with the magic of editing, we are done embossing. We're gonna go ahead and take the diffuser off. Make sure you save both pieces and let's check this out. So wherever you had the hole or the opening is what's going to be diffused. So that remains flat and easy for you to add a focal point or stamp a sentiment. Number 10 is using your embossing folders as a stamp with stamping foam. So I am going to be using the Spellbinders 3D Beautiful Blooms 
folder again. Um, it is one of my absolute favorites. Now, opening the folder, I'm looking for the part that's raised, and I have uh, the smaller version of Simon Hurley's stamping foam. It's super simple to use. I'm just gonna take my heating tool, whatever that may be, and I'm gonna heat up the surface of the stamping foam for about 20 seconds, and then I'm gonna press it into the embossing folder. Now I've already predetermined which part of the embossing folder I want to stamp, and I've just laid it down there, and I'm gonna give it good, even pressure, and then let's take a peek at it, see if it's something we like. Ah, I did not get very good pressure on the top, so watch how easy this is. I'm just gonna use the heat tool again, and it's going to disappear, just as simple as that. As soon as the image has disappeared and it's reheated, go ahead and reseat your foam onto your embossing folder. And once again, give it good, even pressure. This time we have a great impression. From here, I'm going to be using Simon Hurley's dye-based ink. This one is a dark blue called Midnight Snack. And I'm going to just rub the ink pad all over this stamping foam until it's as saturated as I want. Now you can go as heavy or as light, just depends on the look that you're going for. I really wanted this to be a full panel on my card and I'm going to give it a slight mist and place it on my card panel. Now for this time, I am going to employ the use of a Hero Arts acrylic block to get better even um, pressure. Now let's check out just how beautiful this is. Add a sentiment. And this card is pretty much done. The cool thing about stamping foam is it wipes clean with just some water and the stamp will stay for as long as you want it to. If you want to reuse it, just heat it up and the stamp goes away. Or you can flip it over and use the other side for a stamp as well and just keep both of them. Really the sky's the limit and you get three of them in a package. So this card is the diffused embossing that we did after I inked up and added a happy birthday sentiment and some bling. I adore how this distress spray embossing came out. It's gorgeous. Our embossed patchwork card came out really cute. This card is as simple as it is stunning and we used embossing folders as stamps. If you liked today's video, check out some of the others that I have listed here. We'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching.